All right, Chad Millman, CCO, Action Network, all odds provided by FanDuel. I had another winning week thanks to the Cleveland Browns. Didn't think it would be that ugly, but it was. I have been uh, on this belief that the NFL scoring's come down. I'm taking more dogs than ever, and I've always preferred dogs, but I'm taking like four out of five dogs a week. When the, when points come at a scarcity, I'll take them a lot. And Chad Millman's joining us. I'll, I'll tell you the first one that jumps out to me um, is the Chargers are still banged up. The Falcons are getting points at home. I don't trust the Chargers at all. I don't know if they're well coached. And I will say this. I think there's real misgivings in that locker room with what's happening. The play calling, continued injuries. I don't love historically taking the Falcons, but this looks like the play, sharp or square. Totally sharp play right here for everything you just said. Real lack of trust from a better's point of view. I'm not going to try to speculate what's happening in the locker room. I don't know anyone there, but I can tell you that from a betting point of view, There's not a lot of faith in what the Chargers are doing offensively. They seem to have a pretty standard game plan in which the the, the play is try to get some yardage first and second and then have, have Justin Herbert try to bail them out on third down. And what really matters here are two other things that you mentioned. One, the coaching. Two, the injuries. Now, for the injuries, you don't know what you're going to be getting from the wide receiver positions. You know you're not going to have your best le- left tackle. You know you're not going to have your best defensive end. Justin Herbert hasn't been amazing in the clutch plays that he has been amazing at, or at least made us think he was a potential Super Bowl contender in years past. But a lot of this is about the coaching. Like, betters continue to be impressed with Arthur Smith and what he is doing with the Falcons the run scheme they're developing, the way they're able to plug anyone in there and they can consistently get yards on the ground uh, and control the game. And they like the uh, home team getting three points. It's a good spot for them. Uh, I'll throw another one at you. (laughs) This is weird. I don't even, I can't believe I'm saying this. Commanders plus three against the Vikings. Now, a couple weeks ago, When the Niners got Christian McCaffrey, first of all, they spent a day trying to make the deal work, and then they spent a lot of practice time trying to get him integrated into the offense. Minnesota's going to do the same thing. They're going to spend a lot of time on TJ Hawkinson. Those are rough weeks, right? You're spending a a little more time than you would. There's a new player. I'll say this about the commanders. Taylor Heineke may not be Carson Wentz. They play better with him. They play better with him. That's all I care about. Said about Bailey Zappi. I don't know if he's better than Mac, but sometimes I think they play better with him. Sharper square. I take the points and the commanders. This is probably the sharpest bet on the board. There's two bets that are really, really sharp right now. Lines have moved a decent amount when we're talking about uh, key numbers, three, four, et cetera. This game opened to three and a half, got bet down to three. I think there's a couple of things going on here. One, the perception is way, way off on how good the Vikings are and what the commanders have been. And I think a lot of people are still thinking about the commanders as the Carson Wentz team, not the Taylor Heineke team. Taylor Heineke, we've talked about this, QBR, same as Carson Wentz for his career. Completion percentage, same as Carson Wentz. And he's more mobile. So you're getting a better playmaker who also, let's break it down by the game, the Vikings are terrible guarding against the other team's number one receiver, Taylor Heineke, is going to the number one receiver, Terry McLaurin, more often than Carson Wentz did, right? The the Vikings have been incredibly lucky this year. We do the luck rankings. This is one of those games where the luck ranking discrepancy is so high between the Vikings and the Commanders. There's every single, the past three weeks, the, the Commanders are top 10 in expected points per play. Right. So they're measuring how many points would you expect to get on a particular play in a vacuum? Commanders are playing exceptionally well. Commanders on defense, 26% in pressure rate. That's in the top five. Kirk against pressure, 26 in the league as a passer. So there's a lot of things that are lining up for the commanders to be the team that wise guys are backing. Um this seems obvious, but I take a little pride in calling the Jets over the Packers weeks ago. And I said, I just don't think Green Bay is very good. 
Detroit at home is pretty good. Um, I, I worry that by selling off Hawkinson, what does that do to the locker room? But if it's at three and a half, a division rival, a Green Bay team, we have to be honest here. Everything's underperforming. Everything is underperforming. I take Detroit, sharper square. Yeah, you got to take Detroit, and it is the sharp play. It's one that wise guys are starting to hold their nose a little bit, whereas earlier in the year, all of the wise guys loved the Lions, and the Lions were covering for them. And then there were a couple of weeks where they got outplayed in New England. They had a game against the Cowboys where they probably should have covered, but the box score showed a different result than what actually happened sort of in the game and what you could have expected. They were big on the Lions this past week against Miami and ended up being- So was I. Yeah, Yeah. right? And it ended up being a push, right? The Lions closed at four. The game ended 31-27. A lot of people were nervous about going back to back the Lions again, but the bookmakers are hanging the hook, right? That half point is called a hook, three and a half. And the fewest points the Lions have scored at home this season is 27 this past week. They barely had DeAndre Swift playing. Everyone expected him to play. That's why they liked him so much, why they liked the Lions so much this past week. The Packers- they can't even get to 27. And the Lions have been doing this against defenses that are much, much better than the Packers. So they've got a real advantage here. Let's say it's a shootout. I think that's going to favor the Lions. And divisional home dogs, the under six, the past four seasons, a sample size north of 100, covered a 60% clip. So uh, precedent and what you're seeing on the field is playing to your favor. Okay, I'm going to throw a favorite at you. A favorite. Um. The weather in Chicago is going to be okay. I looked it up. Sloppy Saturday, fine Sunday. Um, I think we have to come to terms with Miami. It's a pretty good football team. Uh, Bradley Chubb will come in and just rush the passer. Four and a half's a lot. But the weather's not a factor. I think we're starting to doubt Tua a lot. And they've given up now Roquan Smith and Robert Quinn. Those are two of their best defensive players. It's not as fearsome as it was defensively 10 days ago. Now, I think Eber Luce is an excellent coach, but those guys are really high-end players. Those are, those are difference makers. I'm going to go with Miami here uh, and also Chase Claypool. I think he'll be great. I don't think he's great Sunday. I'm going to take Miami a favorite here, sharper square. Totally square. This was the other game that we got the most feedback about this week on the favorites. We'll do our shop calls segment. The wise guys will call us after our early week podcast. And then on the late week podcast, we'll give you listeners feedback on what they most talked about. Uh, the two games they most talked about, um, Washington, I mentioned that earlier, and the Bears. And this game has moved from five and a half down to five to four and a half, even after the Bradley Chubb trade, which you would expect, okay, the Dolphins, who people think is a stronger team, just got stronger. It didn't move after the Chase Claypool trade. It moved after the Bradley Chubb trade in the direction of the Bears. Here's what I think about what you just said regarding Robert Quinn and Roquan Smith. This defense was terrible, truly terrible. Didn't matter if you had Roquan Smith. Didn't have it matter if you had Robert Quinn. He hadn't done anything this year. Roquan Smith is making all those tackles because the Bears have nobody else. So he's the only guy in a position to do anything, and they still weren't very good. What they have done now, since they had that Thursday night meltdown against Washington, they have realized how to use Ju Justin Fields. They are putting him in more RPOs, more designed runs. He is getting rid of the ball faster. Now they've gotten him a weapon in Chase Claypool. They're building this guy's confidence game to game. He had his best game of the season last week against the Cowboys in a 20-point loss that really could have been much closer. Um, so the wise guys are starting to find some love for this Bears team. Uh, and so they 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 bet the Bears at, at plus five and a half, plus five, and it's down to four and a half. Here's the last game I like. Ravens just lost a receiver for their game Monday night in New Orleans. That's one of the loudest crowds in the league. Uh, I think the Saints have really good personnel. And I took them last week. I'm going to take them again. I think the Ravens are a team that plays close games because there are absolute limitations down the field. And now they've lost another receiver. 
It's just too many points. And you know what, man? Superdome on Monday night, those people don't need a reason to party. They do. It is, it, I always believe it's like a five point advantage. Monday night in New Orleans is not your typical three. It feels way closer to four to five. I'm going to take the Saints, sharper square. That's a sharp play. Uh, and, and look, the, the Ravens just got Rokon Smith. That's not really going to matter when you're talking about the circumstances you just described, which is the Saints at home in prime time are a different team. And they are a different team that can co- that can pressure the quarterback without having to blitz. They are a team that is starting to see Alvin Kamara get much, much better. And the 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 key factor here for them is always going to be how does Andy Dalton avoid the mistakes? We've seen what happens when he avoids the mistakes. We've seen what happens when he makes the mistakes. The wise guys are going to count on getting a short home dog uh, in a really get right spot in prime time against a team that hasn't been able to close anybody out. Uh, so totally sharp, Colin. All right. Now we do the game that I thought about, but I want your professional opinion. Then we do the game that I missed. So let's start with a game. I'm not going to bet, but I want your professional opinion. Uh, New England, I would have taken New England minus four and a half. Uh, I do worry about their offense, but I have a history of Belichick and young quarterbacks. And I saw it again last weekend. He just literally undresses them. Andy Reid off a bye. Belichick against the young quarterback. I bet both a lot, and it's won me a lot. But I worry about what New England has. Tell me, Sharper Square, where would I go if I did bet it? You totally bet on the Colts. Uh, and it's everything you're saying about Belichick is true. And what he did against the Jets is totally true. But what was the final score of that game? Right? It was close. It yeah, was close. It's close. So – do I really want to bet on the Patriots as nearly six point favorites, right? When Shaq Leonard is probably off a snap count, this Colts defense is top five, top six in the NFL and sort of all the advanced metrics, DVOA, rush success rate, all the things that betters think about from the running side of the ball on defense. That's what they're great at. That's the strength of the Patriots offense. Mac Jones and this passing offense are bottom third in passing the ball downfield. So you've got a limited Pats offense get, giving a lot of points. They couldn't beat the Jets by more than five. And Zach Wilson is probably the worst quarterback <laughs> in the NFL right now. And Mac Jones is terrible against zone defense. That's what the Colts do really well. So I think the, the wise guys are looking at the number. More than they're thinking about, is it Sam Ellinger? Is it Bill Belichick against a rookie? They're thinking about a Patriots team that is pretty limited, getting a relatively big number. And let me give you one more By the stat. Way, I let am... me give you a stat. What? All right. right. Great stat. Underdogs this season between three and 10 points. So this game is at five and a half. Are 41 and 21 against the spread this season, covering 66% of the time. And by the way, those underdogs, 25, 36, and one straight up. So if you're betting those underdogs on the money line, you're winning at your ROI is 26%. Can I add this as America's honesty broker and a humble man? Yes. I appear to have been right on my Zach Wilson as Johnny Manziel with an arm take. Go ahead. Give it to me. Bring the heat. Colin, as America's honesty broker and humble you are genius. And the Zach Wilson take is incredibly spot on. And I will never understand why anybody thought this is the guy when everyone could say he had an NFL offensive line at BYU, had a thousand years to throw the ball and was playing against weakened competition. It made no sense that all of a sudden this was going to be the guy. And I think you've seen it with Robert Sala, right? He basically just decided this guy stinks. I'm not banking my career on this guy. When he had yeah. Brees Hall, he was making sure Brees Hall got the ball, making sure his defense is going to win him some games. And even against the Patriots with a terrible quarterback, they still kept it pretty close. So um, you were 100% right. The Jets already got to find a new quarterback. Okay, the game I missed. Can I guess? Go ahead. Um, hold on. Hold on. 
Hold on. Okay. No, you don't like favorites. I was going to say Raiders minus one and a half at Jacksonville. Oh, God, no. I, a thousand percent taking the Jags. It's going to burn me. <laughs> it's going to burn me every week, but I'm going to do it every single week. This is a not very good Raiders team that is playing against a Jags team that is consistently unlucky. And when I mean unlucky, like what are the parameters that go into being unlucky? Kind of those fluke turnover plays, those not converting in. God, they are terrible. It's terrible. But they're still a team that is playing to more wins statistically than they have in the standings. And so I'm getting them as an underdog at home against a Raiders team that I just don't think is very good. So why wouldn't I play the Jaguars? All right. Which game did I miss? Uh, Seahawks at the Cardinals. Why are the Seahawks? Okay. I I wanted to take that. Damn, I wanted to take that so game. Okay, it. you may have talked me into that. Do it. I can't figure out why Arizona is favored here. You have two defenses that statistically are relatively the same, although you're starting to see the Seahawks defense the last couple of weeks trend yes. more towards the upper tier. Right? Getting a much getting, better pass rush the next last yes. couple of weeks. They are getting much, much better. And then you look at the offenses. The Seahawks have one of the most explosive passing offenses in the NFL per every metric that anyone cares about. And now their rushing game is getting so much better because of what's happening with Kenneth Walker. So this is a very good team. I'm not saying like they've gone from being a team everyone thought was going to be the worst in the NFC to all of a sudden being a favorite to win the NFC, but they're better than the Cardinals. And that's where we're talking about the most important thing. This is a coaching mismatch and, and, and not just like, okay, Pete Carroll is an underdog in his career, is brilliant, winning at more than a 60% clip. Cliff Kingsbury, very small sample size, has won maybe half as many games as he's lost as an, as a favorite. Think very specifically, there's a, there's a metric called success rate, which basically means how well do you do in early downs? The cards rank 31st in play success rate, meaning they don't do very well in early downs, and then they depend on Kyler Murray to bail them out, the Seahawks, third in success rate, meaning on the early downs in a series, they are leading themselves into more successful drives and easier plays for their quarterback. This team shouldn't be an underdog right now. That was good. A lot of good information. You know what? A lot of people doubted you for years. Not me. Not this no. guy. You, listen, you recognize talent. You saw it with yeah. Zach Wilson. Yep. Years ago, you plucked me off the street. I remember, I remember we were in building two. We're walking through the hallway. You're like, kid, I don't know you, but you got something. <laughs> kid. All right, buddy. Good seeing you. <laughs> I'll see you later.